My name is Rhapsody and welcome to Monster Train's first paid DLC, The Last Divinity. Now, I have public uh, prior experience in this. There is the public beta, the seven episodes from the public beta that ended up getting uploaded to YouTube. Um, I'll probably have a link to them in a playlist in the description down below. I've also got the patch note review also linked in the description down below. However, in this first video, I am going to treat this clan as though this is your first time seeing it. So if you've seen nothing prior, I'll be going through it at a speed you will be able to appreciate. Um, probably not going through the base mechanics of the game again, considering we've done many prior series on this, and linked in the description down below, you'll be able to find playlists on those. But for the moment, let's jump into it. All right. Random, random. Doesn't seem appropriate. That's what we're doing on the streams at the moment. I already have the clan max level, and I have a couple of the cards already taken through the new end boss fight, The Last Divinity. Um, obviously, as a result of having worked for the publisher. Um, this is not a sponsored series, but I have done sponsored work for the publisher of this game before, so I'm just going to get out there and say that at the very start. Just in case that is a biasing factor you would like to take into account. It is also worth noting, however, that I had played hundreds of hours of this game before I got sponsored for it. All right. Let's get a Wormkin and a random. We'll start with the base Wormkin champion and their base starter cards here. So the base Wormkin champion is the Spine Chief, three size with a 520 stat line by base. Uh, we also have on board two Echo Transfers, two Entombed Explosives, and one Total Recall. Echo Transfer has a new keyword. That keyword is Extract. Extract, and then the number after. You lose Charged Echoes after you played this card. If you cannot, the card cannot be played. Charged Echoes. Add a Charged Echo when playing an Infused card. The Worm can use Charged Echoes to power their spells and abilities. And Charged Echoes can exceed the amount of Charged Echo slots that exist on a floor, but excess will be removed at the end of the turn. For those of you who are more familiar with this, who did watch maybe the public beta, who've maybe played a little bit of this uh, yourself already, um, the first episode is going to be a, just a little bit slower than the normal pace as I kind of go through a couple of these kinds of different things. There's not that much to go through, don't worry. Um, and then the following episodes are going to get back into a normal kind of rhythm. Okay. Yes, so excess charged echoes would be removed at the end of the turn. Cool. Uh, we also see total recall, consume, return three random spell cards from the discard pile to your hand and apply consume. What we're seeing right here is like a good sample set of the different things that exist in the Wormkin. Here is some scaling that's quite cheap. However, it has an extract cost. Here is a consume card that gives you consume cards as well as draw. That's a, that's a lot of the clan identity here. We also have Seraph the Patient as our final and two Entombed Explosives at the start. Cool. Um, so speaking of infused cards, your starter relic is Wormtooth. Clan starter cards are infused. One card in each draft pack will also be infused. Infused, when played, the current floor will gain a charged echo. So it is a per floor resource. You can see here, these cards are infused. And that is the effect of the relic starting out there. As part of the last Divinity update, there is a system of packed shards. The more packed shards you collect, the harder the enemies you face will be. However, you collect them when you are buying very, very powerful upgrades. So it's a risk reward kind of mechanic. Collect 100 before the end of the run in order to unlock a final battle. So if you beat Seraph with 100 or more packed shards, you then go to the last divinity fight, which is the new end boss. Consider it similar or analogous to, uh, you know, the corrupt heart. Threat level, as you gain more shards, more enemies before the boss will be upgraded. The boss itself will even grow stronger. This includes bonus attack, health, status effects, and abilities. Go for the Dark Forge. So by base, we see the two different lines, or two of the different lines, rather, for the Spine Chief. We get Strike, gain a charged echo on this floor. Spine Chief, friendly units have plus five damage per charged echo. So thinking ahead a little, we've got a Divine Temple here. That is a very good way to get a lot of very powerful upgrades. Accept shards in exchange for upgrading spells or combining units. We've got a Merchant of Seal with a Remnant Banner, Merchant of Seal with a Remnant Banner directly next to it. The only problem is we have... Yeah, we have the base starter cards for Melting Remnant. So we would have to find ways to reform or give burnout to units if we really want to try and run a heavy... Heavy melting uh, remnant kind of style. We can take that spine chief. The following levels of that spine chief will get multi strike. 
Mmm. Interesting. Resin Brock, uh, whenever a friendly unit dies, apply plus 10 to that unit. That is really, really good when you are reforming units relatively consistently. Now, because I don't know if in Battle 1 or Battle 2 I'm even going to find a copy of Reform, I don't know if I can try and play into Resin Block. Maybe I can. Maybe I can try and put Endless on something. But uh, a mechanic to be aware of here is that only the first two battles can give you commons as a reward. Right? Past that point, obviously the third battle is going to give you rares. And then past that point, it's uncommons or up. No more commons come into your run. So if you really want to be able to support a unit having burnout or support multiple reforms, right? You're going to want something like Molded. But Molded is common. So you can't get molded after floor two if you haven't gotten it by then. Well, there might be a cabin that can possibly give it to you, but you can't get it from a normal card reward pack. Uh, and then, yes, there are other sources of reform, but that's literally the most common one. Pun not intended, but not avoided. Uh, and then the other version is burnout support, right? Wickless, uh, not uh, not Wickless, uh, the, the one that heals a unit for zero, uh, or rather for zero cost, heals a unit for 15 and then also gives them burnout, or uh, Hallowed Drippings, the consume that gives burnout to the whole floor. Um, the ways that you support stacking a bunch of burnout on a unit also happen relatively early on, and if you don't get those, then oh, suddenly I feel, again, pretty bad about the, uh, the whole resin block idea, the idea of trying to reform them, then play them again, and then try and get extra value out of them. Um, hardened Hull. When an egg unit is summoned, remove three shell and apply 30 armor. Wormkin here, Wormkin here. I like the idea of trying to go for egg Wormkins. Um, so, what is an egg? An egg is a type of unit that starts with shell. Shell. At the end of turn, remove charged echoes from the floor to remove shell from the front unit with shell. When all shell is removed, the unit will hatch. So it is effectively a unit that is in waiting. Um, you can think of it as kind of analogous in a way to the Titan channel of uh, Soulguard the Martyr. You can think of it as similar to their Dire channel, right? They're, they're, uh, Dire channel, sorry, Titan channel. Uh, they have a bunch of stacks of phase that you have to get rid of. It's just you're getting rid of it with charged echoes rather than cant triggers. I'll take Hardened Hull. I want to try and find some, uh, some eggs, show them off here. The other champion, the Exile champion, does have egg-related things. Unfortunately, that is not the champion we're currently playing. So we're going to have to look for units that are eggs. Okay. One difference I should quickly explain, regardless of whether or not you've watched the patch video, I'll just very quickly go through this. If you want my thoughts in large on this... Actually, also, by the way, sorry, my apologies. Uh, I know that this has to be over this side. We will slightly be blocking that discard pile size, but that is not usually a relevant thing. I will try and find a different solution to this, possibly moving the thing up, a la what we're doing in the Downfall series, etc. Okay. So, two things you should be aware of. Covenant rank changes have occurred. So, rank... Uh, where is it? Rank 20 no longer gives the negative capacity to a random floor. It's now always the middle floor, making it much more consistent. Uh, and then 10, apply Ember Drain 1. It's up at the very top there. Uh, middle, I guess. Um, apply Ember Drain 1 to the first unit played on the top floor each turn, rather than applying Dazed to all units on the top floor. Far prefer this. So how do I intend to deal a bunch of damage? Well, we have another new keyword. We're starting to run out of new keywords, by the way, so do not worry. It's this, Inspire, and I can't think of any other new ones in there. So, Reap. A unit takes one damage per stack of charged echoes on the floor. It is when the combat ends. Reap does not decrease. So two stacks of Reap will deal two damage per stack of charged echo on that floor, right? So what we really want here is a lot of charged echoes on the same floor. That would be kind of ideal. Do I want to get two dregs up here on the top line? Is that really what I want to do? Put a Spine Chief behind, or do I want to start fighting on the bottom line? I may want to start fighting on the bottom line. We can pop, uh, you know, Entombed Explosives in front of the boss eventually. Start trying to hoard them up here. I like the idea, actually. Let's go Spine Chief down here. Let's pop a Dreg in front, and then you get Slay Damage Shield, so I cannot put another Dreg directly in front of the Spine Chief to do a uh, kind of body block right there for us. 
I'm not going to want to waste any of my fractures on the bottom line, so I will play a train suit on the top line. It does get the Ember Drain, but this is just so that I can try and get a, uh, a possible collector. Speaking of a possible collector, there's a collector. Hmm. Nope, don't love this. Let's get a train steward there. If I put an entombed explosive there, it wouldn't kill you, right? You'd slay, would you die before? I wonder. I mean, that's the only way. Okay, it doesn't die. That's really rude. Hmm. Yeah, there's nothing I can do to get that collector now. I don't think there was overall even anything I could do to get that collector, unfortunately. That's a shame. I love gold. Would it be nice to get some more? All right. Echo transfer goes out there. I mean, all of those are already dying. We didn't have any fractures in the hand previously. So upcoming, we might draw two fractures. Um, I'm a little keen to even put down another Fracture, just get more Charged Echoes out here, but I don't think I will. Okay. We just want to remove the damage from the backliner as quickly as possible. Fine. You can go there, and then we're looking to get entombed explosives as well as more reap on the midline I guess mm -hmm. okay entombed explosive there we go Got him in the end, we just missed the collector. Proclamation, infused, attune, extract two. When a card has infused, so it gives a charged echo to a floor. By the way, I will start referring at some point to the charged echoes as candies, but I'm just referring to them as charged echoes at the moment so that you know when things come up on the screen, what they're specifically referring to. Also, uh, let me just quickly, uh, let me just quickly crop that a little. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Okay, so when a card has infused and extract, it will add the charged echo before it tries to take them away. So this will actually work if I only have one charged echo on the floor. Uh, it's also attuned. Extract two, deal 50 damage to the front enemy unit. It's not bad. It might be worth a slot in this deck at the moment. Shelter, consume, apply armor 2 to all friendly units. Uh, per charged echo, sorry. Armor 2 per charged echo. The thing is, I'm not going to want to extract a lot early on because I'm going to want to try and break shells. I'll still take it as just like a frontline bop. Ooh. Wow, so we actually got like a, a smorgasbord of different Burnout and Reform cards here. The kinds of things that I was talking about prior, not necessarily being able to rely on them. That Molded would be really good just to get back Entombed Explosives, drop those down. Um, I mean, like I'm holding out for an egg. Am I really holding out for an egg? Is that really what we want to do? It's not Hallowed Drippings, so it's either Purifying Cleanse here or it's Molded. How hard are we going to be leaning into Melting Remnant in this run? Unfortunately, it depends. We are about to go to a Merchant of Magic so that we can try and find egg things, which means the Molded is slightly better because it's a neat way to possibly get a... Uh, get a rel Oh, wow. Okay, yikes. Um, That's a Legion of Wax and it's infused. I, I have to, right? It's up against both the other Wicklesses, which is a little rough. Okay, Toggle Unit Essences. Let's talk about this for a moment. 
Uh, this is one of the new mechanics. This is one of the ways to spend your pack shards. In a Divine Temple, you will be offered the option to uh, slot one unit into another unit, effectively. So you use a unit by consuming it to upgrade another unit. So you're making a Taduken of sorts. Uh, you can see what a unit's essence is, that is, what it would give to another unit if you used it as the sacrifice, by toggling that. So if we gave the Wickless Tycoon, if we destroyed that from our deck and then put it in, you know, at the moment, basically whatever we have, you know, a Dreg, that Dreg would have plus five, plus ten, and Harvest gain five. It's worth noting, you can only socket one unit into any other unit, right? You can socket as many units into other units, that is to say, uh, you can make multiple different units that have in, uh, essences in them, but you can't have a unit with multiple essences in them. That's probably a better way to clarify that there. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, you see a Legion of Wax this early, you take a Legion of Wax this early. God, does that mean I now go to the Merchant of Steel instead? I think it does. I think I'm no longer trying to do egg things, which is sad, but maybe we find a different way to back up into those eggs later on. I don't know. What I do know right now is that we have Legion of Wax, right? And Legion of Wax, when it splits to two motes of wax, those motes of wax, I believe, apply this unit's upgrades. I think the essence is an upgrade specifically. So I believe those motes of wax, or rather the twins of wax, and then later on the motes of wax after the Legion of Wax is split, uh, will all gain the essence effect. And if they do, this is Extinguish Deal 50 damage to the front enemy unit. So we can have it just nuke enemies when it dies and just be really, really weak and then just give it like Burnout 1 and Endless and then play it every turn and just nuke a floor. The thing is, that is good, but the end game, especially if you go to The Last Divinity, scales ridiculously. Is that a plan that can beat The Last Divinity in the end? Jury's out on that. Hmm. Okay. We'll still go this way. Merchant of Steel when I have. This is pretty good. Echo Stone. Upgrade a unit with plus three damage per charged echo on that floor. So you have to have four full charged echoes on a floor before this is better than the strength stone by base. However, in the relentless phase, you're not losing any of the charged echoes you're gaining. So the spine chief here is gaining a bunch of uh, charged echoes, filling a whole floor with giant amounts of charged echoes. Uh, and then the unit that stands behind them holding an echo stone is doing a bunch of damage. Super neat. Let's have a look at the remnant banner. Wow. Oh, God. This is really hard. Because... So both of these would be destroyed and put as an essence into the... Uh, into the Legion of Wax. 100%, right? So Legion of Wax getting plus four permanently, not to just itself, but to all of the ones that come out of it afterwards. Uh, that's really good. That's exceedingly good. Also, by the way, if we'd gone for the wax key, this would be even better. Yeah. 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 The whole Legion of Wax thing would even be better. I was trying to play into new things. And also away from Melting Remnant a little bit. That's, that's mainly a joke. Um, and Harvest Gain 5. Now, the thing about Wickless Tycoon, Harvest Gain 5, is all of the Legions of Wax are going to have Harvest Gain 5 Gold, and suddenly we can buy everything in the game. So while we're getting a very early offer of a Bounty Stalker here, I'm going to take the Wickless Tycoon. And then we will engage a Pact to put that Wickless Tycoon into this Legion of Wax. Then we also have two other options here, Value Stone and True Stone. These are, these can be different, right? This is the smaller one. This is the larger one. This can be Value Stone, uh, negative two. It can be, and I'm not going to go through all the things it could be, but it can be other things. Um, plus 10 magic power and piercing, eh? The only thing that can even hit right now is Proclamation. I don't know. 
know if I need that. When's our first dupe? Because we will probably want to dupe the Legion of Wax. Uh, which means we want to be really picky with its upgrades. Hmm. If I put Burnout 1 on it, I can use it to make a bunch of money. Right? So we'd put Burnout 1 on it, we'd put Endless on it, and then we just make a bunch of money with it. The problem there is... While it will make us a lot of money, it won't do much. Is that okay? Do I just want a card in my deck that gains a bunch of money for us consistently, and then I have to find other units to put in for my actual damage and, and ultimate game plan? I could throw a large stone on it. You know, they take a large stone quite well. The only thing is you do need them to die in the first instance, right? How are we going to get them to die? The echo transfers are really, really good on that Legion Wax as well. I'm going to give it the burnout. I'm going to make a bunch of money with them, and then we'll see what we want to do in the future. For the moment, though, let's go into the next battle. 21 minutes, and we're only getting to the second battle. It's a little pickaxe. <laughs> That's 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 a whole sentence, right? Okay. Oof. That bottom floor. Actually, they will kill the Legion of Wax. Right? 14, 5. That actually splits the Legion of Wax and then the clergyman. Uh yeah, that'll even try and split. We're gonna get a lot of harvest trees on this bottom line if we play Legion of Wax there. That's great. Um I'll use a train steward to chump block on this top line, and it will die in the first round of combat, so I'll lose the ember drain, so I actually just get to play it there for free. And then you go on the bottom line. I want the Legion of Wax to die, yes? And I want its splits to start dying as well. But they will die from burnout at the end of the turn anyway. It's fine. I just put a drag behind them. Did you just see what happened to our money? Because I did. Because I definitely did. We can use a drag to chump block for a single one right now. Yeah, sometimes you do what the best you can, you know? You do what the best you can, you know? I'm actually going to slow that down for the next resolution down here, just so we can kind of see. I think it's going to get less money this time, though. All right. Got him. They attack and kill the frontliner, and then all of the rest of them trigger their harvest, gaining 15 gold right there. And then we kill 15 gold. Another kill, 15 gold. Another kill, 15 gold. Another kill, 15 gold. And then they burn out and they trigger themselves. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, we can pop an Entombed Explosive on the bottom line pretty happily, even. On this top line, uh, get a train steward on the front line. Uh, I don't really want to give my... Well, I can give myself Burnout next turn. That's actually fine. It's very little impact on us. Nice. Nice molded. That's what we were looking for. You go there, and then we echo transfer you. And then we'll watch the resolution again. Mmm! Thank you for the gold. Oh, I'm so glad to be split here. Because now, more gold! Oh, you're going to split us again? Yeah, you are. Yeah, you damn well are, aren't you? <laughs> and that tree is four more harvests down there. Essences are wild, yo. 
Hosting Kin, Echo Snare, and Echo Infusion. So this is a really good way to scale HP. There aren't that many ways outside of the... Uh, uh, yeah, between these two clans, there's not that many ways outside of the common set to actually keep a unit healthy. That is not make a unit healthy again by bringing it back from the dead or anything like that. Let's keep it healthy. Um, yeah, I could tappily take a Echo Infusion here. Tappily take it and even happily take it. Hmm. Gosh, I do just need more reform in this deck. But it's not this. It's got to be the Wicked Blaze. I need the ability to bring it back multiple times thereover. And I need a higher density of um, Molded Draws in my deck. So here's the problem. Unstable Hellvent. So if I am going to Hellvent the uh, Legion of Wax, and I very likely am, I'm going to need to go here and get an upgrade for it first so that I'm getting maximum value. Uh, quick. Eh. Strength Stone. Strength Stone's not awful. I'm definitely looking more for like a, a multi-strike kind of situation though. Or endless. Multi-strike or endless. Well, now I have to decide. So multi-strike gives it the ability to project its damage a lot more and gives it the ability to utilize the echo transfers significantly better. That just has to be it, right? <sighs> yeah. Now I'm a little sour that they have Burnout 1, but that's okay. So I'm going to have to figure out a second plan, right? Something else that we do with the deck that's good against bosses. Because this is going to be good against flaws, but it's not going to be good against bosses. All right, Remnant, maybe you give me my... <laughs> maybe you give me my second plan. Gosh. I'm going to need to find space to play it and then kill it consistently as well. But it's it's Bounty Stalker and then just trying to find a way to utilize it. I think it, it just has to be. Um, Divine Boons, 100 gold for 10 pack shards. That's actually not worth it for it right now. Uh, worth it for us, rather, right now. I'm not going to give Burnout, by the way, to the Bounty Stalker. Eventually, I'm going to want to put them in the back line and have them actually stay alive for a while. Um, got things to sell caverns here. <sighs> okay. Wow. Five legions of wax isn't good. You know what it might be, though? Maybe it's five molded. Just to increase the density of them in the deck. It could also just be one dupe of the legion wax and then the other one is dupe molded later on. Or even... Legion of Wax, and then we go out to the Merchant of Magic instead. Although it really feels like if I am going to try and find more for the Bounty Stalker, I'm going to want to find a Wemkin banner and then some way to... Well, obviously the Infuse is right there if I want to copy a card. Often copying five times is the right play, but it feels like everything here, as I increase its density to six in the deck, is a lot. It's, it's a, a too much. A, um, a, a, a problem amount. Stupid. you. Okay. Anything else here that needs to be resolved? I mean, I can remove units at a Merchant of Steel. And with the amount of money we make really early on, yeah, I'm totally comfy just removing some units here. Alright, Daedalus. We need to keep an eye on the term timer, uh, turn timer, rather, up here. 
It's going to have to be something I have to be very, very careful about. That goes there. Um, you go there. Because I want you to die on turn one. And I guess that means the Spine Chief has to go top floor if I'm playing it. There you go. Do I replay the first one or get a second in the pool? I think I replay the first one. I'm looking to try and increase its burnout timer so it's going to be better against the boss later on. Mm, but there's also the bounty stalker. It feels wrong not to get the bounty stalker here. I am really going to need that dupe of the uh, molded, as it turns out, I believe. Or holdover. I think a holdover to molded would be pretty good. Okay. Molded brings back the bounty stalker. It goes in the front line. So it will die to the constructed explosive. I just want it to die as many times as possible. I just... I'm very, very, very keen on that. You can go there, kill the next one. Um, I need more health on that Legion of Wax. Or do I put it on the Spine Chief? I think I just put it on the Spine Chief. Mm -hmm. To counter things like this. Although it does explode two times. So I can't just put two dregs directly in front of the Spine Chief there and actually kind of laugh it off. Not a bad idea. Uh, although we will use... I really want to use Fracture against the boss, but I want to use it even more against the U so that they actually go to the next floor. Dreg block. Dreg block. Uh, thankfully, the Ember Drain will die as well. And I'll use an Echo Transfer there too. Entombed Explosive? Nope. Nope, I want those units to survive and then go to the next floor so that it can get better off harvests. Um, same there again, same reasoning that is. Okay, if I put a dreg here and then I fracture it, it's not going to die right now, unfortunately, but it gave me the stats that I needed to get. Uh, uh, gave me what I needed in order to get the infuse off. Hey, Wicked Blaze is back. Nice. Obviously, I would love, love to go for the Bounty Stalker. Ah, can I go for the Bounty? I can't go for the Bounty Stalker right now. Legion last bottom line. And that kills the boss. Nice. Went into that fight with 90. We leave the fight with 485. That's okay, I guess. Uh, infuse, consume, remove three shell from eggs. I Remove all burnout and debuff effects from your unit. That gives me the ability to... Uh, Worm Etchings, by the way, is another uh, return five consume cards at the top of your draw pile. That's really cool. Um, but Wickless Recruitments gives me the ability to transition someone who was uh, hitting their burnout limit um, because we've been refreshing them or because they have burnout by base and make them not that. Another Wickless Tycoon, eh? Funny. When played. Gain plus 10, plus 10, and plus 1 capacity per charged echo on the floor. Hmm. This toggled unit essence is summon, gives it plus 10, plus 10. I'll tell you what, that actually wouldn't be too bad to put into the bounty stalker. Because we summon it multiple times every fight. So it's like a votive key. It's not votive key. It's like a waxen. Yeah, let's do it. Not capacity because we didn't go for a large stone. 
Draw or energy? Hmm. I feel like because I do a lot of top line playing. Like, I want draw so I can get back to my reforms and stuff consistently. I want energy so that I can play regardless of whether or not I Ember Burn. I'm actually going to take a Fels Remorse here, and then I'll probably end up taking draw as the next one. Um, Pyre remains. Interesting, interesting, interesting. That Wormkin banner means less right now because I do have the Kinhos Carapace to already go into the Bounty Stalker. It's just... Yeah, it's just having access to a dupe as well as two removals that particularly appeals. And it appeals enough. Let's look at the Divine Temple and see what we get here. Spell Chain and Purge Stone. Interesting. Kinhos Carapace and a Keeper of Echoes. So the Keeper of Echoes has Inspire. Inspire occurs whenever you add a charged Echo to that floor. So it's like an Incant Trigger. It's related to a specific trigger condition and it gives typically a positive effect. Plus one, plus one to friendly units is neat. Unfortunately, the essence is not inspire plus one, plus one to friendly units. Otherwise, it would be really good to keep the uh, keep, keep the moats of wax alive later on. It's it's none of these. It's it's definitely skip here. We're also definitely putting the Kinhos Carapace into the Bounty Stalker. We're going to be looking for Multi-Strike for you. Upgrade a spell to gain Spell Chain. So Spell Chain, when played, a copy of this card will be added to the hand. The copy gains plus one to its cost and purge. That would actually be really good to do on a Molded. A lot of the time, when I get to Molded, I have a Legion of Wax dead, I have a Bounty Stalker dead, and I want multiple back. Um, so yeah, let's do that. I could also upgrade a card to Purge and give negative one, but I, I'm already holding a lot of pack shards right now. I don't know if I want to go that far. Uh, as for Hellventing, now I can Hellvent to dupe that Molded. Not the way we want to play this? I think so. And the Unstable Vortex removes a Train Steward as well as a Dreg. And we go to the Dark Forge for... There's our Multi-Strike on Infectinator. Sorry, Infector. Uh, and the Echo Transfers are really, really good with the Multi-Strike on this. It's also just really good stats for a unit, just in case I do most of my operations on other floors. Doesn't really need support to be good. And almost enemy units gain multi-strike. I'm actually really happy for them to be multi-striking here. I want them to kill my units. It's frankly ideal for me that they do. Um... Can't echo transfer on this floor, unfortunately. We're going to need this floor empty, which means if I'm playing Bounty Stalker, it's going on the top floor behind, or sorry, in front of the Spine Chief. I guess so. That's all I can do with it. That's all I can do with it. Let's get Total Recall out of this. Oh, I shouldn't have played it on that floor because that's in camp. I just want to get that out of the deck. There we go. Got a bunch of money there. And... Another Legion of Wax. Uh, I want to get the Fracture on the back line, I think, here. Yeah, that's going to be more impactful than the Entombed Explosive. I should probably try and do much, uh, as much of my damage as possible on that midline. Yes. 
Unfortunately, I can't get the ability to play the Echo Transfer on the top line because no one's coming up here yet, so I can't buff the Spine Sheaf, which is real harsh, but to be expected. Let's give you a... Do I fracture you or try and fracture on a bot? I think I'll give you the fracture. And then proclaim... Might as well Echo Transfer. More damage. There we go with the Wicked Blaze pickup. Get back a Legion Wax. Uh, they are both 100% the same at the moment. Cool. I do ideally want the Legion Wax to die so that I can actually do some damage. God, that Cliff's Guardian looks like it's actually going to give us the absolute business. Because we can't do much damage to it in the midline, we would be able to kill the Clip Defender. At least. I guess I gotta do that so I reveal the Clipped Guardians, my own Spine Chief later on. Fracture there for the kill, and then just sack these for two more charged Echo Kills. This is really good in terms of its utility. It's not great in terms of its everything else at the moment. Which, uh, that everything else matters <laughs> is the problem with that. Uh, all right, Molded. Show me what we're working with. Yeah, it's the Legion. Do I want to propagate expensive molds through the deck? I think I actually do through the new draw pile. So we'll take that. Uh, so these purge copies won't even die at the end of the turn. So we can give this stealth. Get the damage from it. Lose the Ember Drain, even. Nice. Um, and we can get a Legion Wax on the bottom line. Ready for anyone else who comes out. You with a Fracture for the kill. Unfortunately, the Clip Shaman is going to get to the top line and it hasn't extinguished. Deal five damage to our front unit. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes things just happen. I don't want to mess with anything on the top floor by trying to use an Echo Infusion and possibly missing all of the damage I need to reap. Mm. Yes. They're all burning out this turn, but unfortunately two moats will be alive next turn. So I really need this bottom line to do as well as it can. The drag there, try and save some HP. They each have burnout too. So they are actually manually getting killed. Well, no, killed, hit, 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 killed, right? That's Wicked Blaze. Get the Kinhos Carapace and pop that in the back line. That is the Bounty Stalker with Kinhos Carapace, rather. Um, it's currently dying to Burnout, so we'll remove all of its negative effects, including Burnout, and it kills the enemy for us. Nice. When played, your champion gains 50% max health. This is one of the new colorless artifacts in the game. That's really good for us right now. In uh, Return Soul, return a spell card from the discard and apply Infused, negative one to its cost, as well as Consume. We've also got Ambient Charge here, extract three, draw three, apply Consume to the drawn spells, and Revenge of the Damned, extract one, deal five damage twice on Slay, gain two charged Echoes on that floor. Definitely in the Return Soul there, 100% of the time for me, thank you. Uh, another Wicked Blaze. Or Subsuming Blade or Mortal Entrapment. All of these are viable options. Subsuming Blade would start giving me the ability to kill my own things, like the uh, the Bounty... Well, the Bounty Soaker comes out with plus 10 constantly, so no, I can't kill that consistently. Eventually, it would give me the ability to kill my own Legions of Wax. That's probably the least among these, in my mind. Mortal Entrapment is a really good way to deal with Seraph the Patient, so that it doesn't matter that they're attempting to attack, because what are you doing? Um, 
we can blaze is nice still we have a lot of reform in this deck and as we cut more cards out we're gonna have more reform density i'll take the mortal entrapment here uh, okay we have a bunch of money there's a merchant of trinkets i'll uh let you guess what's about to happen Team units get plus 30 and burn out one. Eh. By day standard units when they enter the pyre room, so we'll save ourselves from uh, a decent amount of enemy hits. I may actually end up taking the vapor funnel. It feels like units are very close to trying to go to our top floor. Grant plus one stack of reap each time it's applied. We don't really apply that much reap. So let's go for vapor funnel reroll. Units get an extra upgrade slot, as well as uh, Boone of the Blacksmith. To outweigh the effect of the uh, vapor. Um, Sinner's Solve, Blights and Scourges cost zero. So good as Divine Temple. Have a look at some of the options. Extreme Stone. I'm probably not going to do it. <laughs> but there is that option there. Uh, giving this piercing, though. Now we're more in the realm of viability. I'll I'll give that the piercing. Now make it 250 damage to the front enemy unit for extract one. I don't think so. Engage packs. I could try and like pack a entombed explosive into an entombed explosive here or something like that, but we're really high on pack shards for where we are in the game right now. Let's go to the battle. Non-boss enemy units get six additional damage. We get 150 should we win. We want them to have additional damage, remember? We would like for as many of our units as is possible to dead. Uh, yeah, I'm going to lose an energy next turn, but that's okay. I just need it. We can play a Frasher here on the bottom line just to get another charge echo out. <laughs> Love it when it works out like that. Uh, so the next floor is going to have the Legion of Wax. And then the Bounty Stalker. I mean, that wants to go top floor front. Start out with a Wicked Blaze. Get that Legion Wax out there. Um, six, eight, eight, eighteen. I would like, I mean, I can fracture one of the back lines. We'll actually kill it. We've got enough charged echoes on that floor at that time. Yeah, I guess that's the best we can do right now. Again, this is really good at making money. It's not that good at doing anything else. We see this clipped guardian here immediately keen to prove said point. So we're returning a card from the discard. I mean, we can return Mortal Entrapment and then that would already take care of that unit though. I guess we do that then. Unfortunately, that spell is also now consumed, but it does give me an opportunity to get that out. Um, sure. Nice. Can't play the Echo Transfer on the top line again. Let's use Molded to gain back the more powerful Legion of Wax. 
And we'll leave the other molded in the deck for should these burn out. They won't. Give you the echo transfer as well. Really, really give them the uh give them the works there. Self-made harpy is very powerful as a result of our pack shards. It's a six by seven once the sycophant in the back line dies, which it will. Uh it's gonna become even worse. It's 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 rough stuff. Um, okay, that's all fine on the top floor though. We use double fracture here just so that we can use an echo transfer immediately after. So that has a bunch of reap on it, but it's fine. It does die very quickly next floor, but that's you know, totally intended and expected. Uh, let's totally recall. Let's give more stats to the spine chief just in case. I can foresee a world where that mattered. Okay, so the chumps having burnout wasn't even affecting the outcome of this yet. Although that's really bad for me. Because I intended to put the Kinho's car uh, the Bounty Stalker on the top line. So if I could have removed its debuff, that would have worked. Oh. oh! Well, don't really got too much to say about that one. So I'm hoping I draw Molded, I guess. It's actually better that Sycophant lives, because it donates so much damage to the self-made Harpy. It's two per strike, so it's 14 damage that it donates, but it only does eight by itself. So we actually fracture the front line here. Cool. Let's get back the Bounty Stalker again. See if we can get it to die one more time. The road. No. All right, fine. I'll just get the kill then. Oh, look, money. Echoes of the past. Apply plus six damage per charged echo. Clear your charged echoes. That's really good. It's just also really a little bit hard for us to manage because we don't get many charged echoes, unfortunately. I think I still take it specifically. The others are Power of Knowledge, Infused. Deal 15 damage for each spell in your consume pile. We consume a fair few spells, but still not. Uh, forgotten Trade, gain an energy per charged echo on that floor. Mortal Entrapment, Resin Removal, Memories of the Melted. Memories of the Melted right now would be... Uh, uh, infinite Energy. Do we need infinite energy. Not right now, but we could. Dupe and removal or a merchant of magic? I think I go to the merchant of magic. We're looking for consistency. So we're looking for things like, uh, you know, cost reductions, cost reductions, cost reductions, permafrost, permafrost. Um, not to be sure what it would do with you. Holdover. Almost nothing's a whiff here. So. Well, double stack is. Right now. Well, there's double stack. So we know when we reroll, we can't get double stack anymore. Consume removal would actually be the other whiff. And if we get both double stack and consume removal, well, look, well done game. You got me. You rumbled me something fierce. There's Divine Temple up next in the next area. So I would need a value stone after I stack stone if I stack stone the Mortal Entrapment specifically. But if I uh, stack stone the Mortal Entrapment, I only ever really have to cast it once. I like that. I like that. Uh, great. 
so these these molded want to be one cost. Okay. We could have had permafrost. We could have had holdover. We could have had. Um, it's not four, right? There's permafrost, holdover, double stack, consume removal. Actually, it might just be those four. Permafrost, holdover, double stack, consume removal. Uh, yeah, it's just those four. But we hit exactly the two that I didn't want. So that was, you know, four pick two and then three pick one. That's okay. It happens. It happens. This is going to be unplayable for a few fights time. I'm not jazzed about it being unplayable, but it, making it playable right now prevents us from possibly getting a value stone here and removing two from its cost, which would just be so much better for us. An arcane machine peeks through the snow. Mechanical arms in controls, and controls rather, in various states of disrepair. The large harness in the center looks to have something vaguely familiar. Looks to have held rather something vaguely familiar, but you can't place what? Near the opening of the train, a metal control board stands relatively untouched. Clean, even. Strange. When you move towards it, the board whirs to life and a single button with a diamond icon flashes before you. Do you press the button? Press the button to build a card. It moans in response, additional prompts appearing on the panel. A row of levers has come out of the metal board. Uh, each one adorned with symbols you can only assume refer to various elemental effects. So shield, sap, or rage. Do I want to play it on my enemies? Do I want to play it on myself? I mean, armor's nice. Man, I could have double stacked one of what I'm getting from this. That would have been nice. I guess if I gave it rage, I could put it on the, the spine chief as significant damage as well. Yeah, let's do the rage. The machine moans in response again. Additional prompts appearing on the panel. We press the flame icon. A row of levers rises from the middle board. Each one adorned with symbols you can only assume refer to various health related effects. A damage effect, a heal effect, or a buff effect. Let's go with buff. Right? Because I just put rage on a prior. And it can have push, pull, or descend. The problem is I constantly play new minions, so using this to descend is not incredible. Hmm, sometimes it is. Sometimes it is. Let's take Descend. The buttons and levers on the control panel recede into the metal box and the entire device sinks into the ground. The metal harness clamps shut, likely trying to embrace whatever once existed in its grasp. But as the metal arms link... The train begins to shudder. No, your pyre begins to rumble, perhaps in recognition before any logical thought, thought, can, thought can form, rather. A blinding flash of light knocks you back. What's left behind is a black, polished orb, not unlike the pyre itself. Uh, ye olde. Apply rage four, gain plus ten, and descend the unit. Unfortunately, I don't have uh, anything that can affect that here. Also go to the Divine Horde. Spells get an extra upgrade slot. Oh, gosh. Oh, wow. I would happily... I, I, I think I take that because I want the Maudlin Trapment to be cheap. Uh, Capricious Reflection is really good as well. Cards in units, uh, banners, and reward packs come with a random upgrade. There's also an improved firebox. I'm taking Lightstone Casing, though, because we have so much money that we can buy so many upgrades and put them on so many things. Um, you know what? I'm going to consume remove you. Maybe I end up giving you holdover, and that's where I get all of my energy from. Is that a good idea? It's not a good idea. It's a permafrost that goes on that. Those upgrades are weak. Hmm. Felling powers units with rage. Perfect. 
Alabaster Guardians also have multi-strike. Also perfect. Kind of ideal. Alright, Legion Wax. There you go, die on the bottom floor if you can. Spine Chief goes out on top line. Um... At least the Spine Chief has someone to hit, so it is going to be gaining Charge Echoes. Sure. I'm going to Fracture you so I can use an Echo Infusion there. I'm not going to use Total Recall, though. Maybe I end up using that later. I would have used it if I just wanted to burn it out of the deck because I didn't think it was going to give us any good effects. Memories of the Melted gives us the ability to play the Wicked Blaze as well as the Legion Wax. The only problem is we can only get a little bit of value out of Legion Wax right now. Because we only have one place to put it. Get him, Legi. Nice. Uh, then I'll use the Memories of the Melted still on the top floor, and then Fracture here, and then Echoes of the Past for plus 24 damage. It's pretty good on that unit. Getting down the Alabaster Guardians at the start of this was always going to be the biggest problem for us. Uh, unfortunately, that Cliff Guardian hasn't taken any damage yet, which means the... Well... Hmm, makes our life hard. Thankfully, the Quill Marksman will just die as soon as they get to the top line, though. Nice work, Kinhost. He's molded to bring back a Legion. Unfortunately, I only have one place to put a Legion right now, so... I will just leave that as another molded to cycle through the deck later. Uh, throw both Fractures against the back line here. Seems wise in my mind, because the Reap doesn't dis uh, disappear, so that'll be really good later on. Or could be really good later on. Will not necessarily, just by virtue of existing, be good. Um, okay. Oh, and both of those cool marksmen are also going to die when they get to the top line. Beautiful. Oh, Master of Light getting sweet. I'm actually okay with that. I'm actually, like, extremely okay with that. Well, doesn't really impact upon us at all. There we go. And that's what we were looking for. Molded. Brings back Legion of Wax. Okay, we put the Legion of Wax here, and then we send you down. And then Molded gets another Legion of Wax. And this one just goes here. I can also infuse to pull back. And I can pull back Echoes of the Past. Let's try and gain some more stats here. I actually like that a lot. Echoes there. Echoes of the Past. Now, the Spine Chief is very powerful. Just need to consistently chump block for it. <laughs> Speaking of not consistently chump blocking. God, it's all coming up, Millhouse. Hell yeah. Um, two waves remaining. I might just remove the burnout from the Legion Wax on the bottom line there, in the back. Okay. 
Return soul for echo transfer. I like that. Just looking to get stats on our back line. However we can get him. Not too picky. Let's use the Wicked Blaze to get back a Bounty Stalker, which will immediately die on the top floor there. Also prevents its own Ember Drain by having died. Okay. Let's mortally entrap you. Get out of Mold. Yeah, there you go. Too many explosives. So much money. Uh, no health on the spine sheep, though. Oh, God. It's actually kind of hilarious. We have to descend the spine sheep so that if we draw and we are very we're reliant on drawing one of the molded, right? There's five cards that can save us. We need to draw specifically one of them. Alright. I really wish I had the first attack here. Oh well. Ought I proclaim? I think I ought. And the molded gives us that Legion of Wax back. Go there. Beauty! You can see how this isn't scaling as we might need. Oh, wow. Okay, Hallowed Halls. This is the new rare for Melting Remnant. Kill all friendly units. Reform random units to this floor until it exceeds its capacity. Let's take and utilize that a little bit, shall we? Uh, speaking of capacity... Is that something I'm interested in? Nope. I gave it a look in. I did give it a look in. Decided not to go with it, but I did give it a look in. Uh, we have the ability to upgrade units another time, right? We took the Pie Stone housing super early on. We should be hitting Merchants of Steel like nobody's business. Endless goes on you. Large stone. The problem with the large stone is I would have needed to get it before the last floor so that I can actually try and put it on units. Um, guess I'll give strength stone to one of you. Look at the Divine Temple. Spell Chain. Hmm. It's not a bad upgrade to put on something like a... Um... <laughs> I mean, Hallowed Halls would be hilarious. Uh, it's, it's, it's not a bad kind of upgrade to put on something like a Yay All Day Magic, but that's also not really necessary. Could do it to... No. No, I think I'll just sit on what we have at the moment. I also don't think I'm even going to engage a Pact here. We will, however, upgrade our champion one more time. Get another stack of multi-strike. Even more effective damage propagation for all of the damage that we have in the deck. Or damage enhancements that we have in the deck, rather. Uh, the sub enemy enemy appearance... Uh, enemy units appear on each floor. That's fine. If they go to the top floor, they do still do their uh, explosion effects. But they're not going to kill us. Hmm. Oh, hang on. Sorry. Uh, wrong order. Wrong order. I'm not getting any new information of the next hand or like a random result or anything like that. Um, it's just this should go down first. 
because it is ultimately going to die to all of the Will Wings, and therefore I'll avoid the Amber Drain. Hmm. Nice. Safety on the bottom line. Oh, I could have just done it with a Wickless anyway. There you are. Ready to take the next hits. Thanks, bud. Real kind of you. Shame that collector in the back line is going to require a fracture from us, but it will. Oh my god, we still don't even kill it. Echo Transfer, Proclamation, both great drops here. Let's just throw them. I can return Soul to bring back... Hallowed Halls can bring back Legion Wax, Legion Wax, and a Dreg. A. Eh? Hmm. I want to play the Hallowed Halls more than one time, but... I'm very tempted to return at Soul right now. I'm too tempted. These are all cardless. We do it in the midline. It just brings back two legions of wax, baby! That's so good. Oh, that's so damn good. I was scared I was going to get the drag. It was, in fact, quite likely to get the drag. So that's 10 damage to the front unit. I'm constantly burning out here because I have to constantly play new units on the top line. I'm okay with it, but it is a thing to consider. It is certainly something that is considerable. Let's use the second molded just to pull back a entombed explosive that'll go in the front line here. You know, just for a wee bit of excess damage, the confusion can happily go on that top line. And then it's fractures to try and kill back lines here, I think. <laughs> uh, printing money. I don't have the ability to get an extra unit on the board using the yay old aim magic right now. Midline gets the kills. There you go. Score some excess damage there, friend. And we'll pop another entombed explosive out there. Now, I said at the start that this isn't necessarily going to pull us through the end game, but it will be fun, and it's been fun. This is the part where I warn that I am uh, quite concerned about the long-term efficacy of this. Maybe I need not be. But maybe I should be more scared than I am. Hmm. 
This could be a problem. We're just going to need to buff the heck out of that Spine Champion. Because I can't yay all day to clear out a whole floor. And this floor is going to have half motes of wax next, uh, next line anyway. I mean, they're burning out right now. Why not? I mean, I, uh, this doesn't burn out fast enough. You go down, you go in front. We'll remove your debuffs so you get as much damage out as is possible. You with a reap. That's okay now. These units are just going to burn out. The enemy goes up. They've got so much. Uh, so much days on them. That we're definitely fine. I mean, gosh. Let's just pull that back and daze you even more. No need to have done that. But I wanted to. That accounts for all of the need required, I think. Broken Memories, return to consume spell to the top of your draw pile. There's also a total recall there, making cards consume. No. Um, the other one was add a charged echo slot and add a charged echo. Engulfed in smoke, eh? I'll tell you what, playing that, uh, playing that mold entrapment is going to be pretty hard unless I go over here and go for a double removal. Of its cost, that is. Uh, whenever one or more charged echoes are applied to a floor, give that to a random unit twice. I'll take that. I'll take the mold braces as well. That is, sorry, give reap one to a random unit twice. Um, apply armor five to the front for any unit. Sure. Roll. Increase capacity on each floor by one? Yeah, I guess. Take a jack strips, sure. Whenever a card with the consumers play deal 30 in front of a unit, sure, that might be necessary. Hold over. <laughs> Hold over hallowed halls. As I remove more garbage units from my deck, that's going to get consistently better. That actually might be a hilarious way to win. <laughs> Well, entrapment decreases cost as well and then we have a bunch of cards still left to purge two dregs out of the deck we go to the merchant of magic and we get two entombed explosives out of the deck and now the only things in the deck are the legions of wax in terms of minions, that is. Legions of Wax and the Bounty Stalker. Those are all things I would be really happy to get back from Hallowed Halls, so... I guess we're good on that front, which means just remove a base fracture. Okay. Anything else I wanted to do? Anything else I really can do? Like, I can buy... I can take the Divine Boons and not remove anything or give Consume Remove to something that doesn't need Consume Remove. I guess, sure, let's just put the Magic Power on uh, the one that sticks around, I guess, then. All right, Seraph. They will give the front unit melee weakness. Wow, I don't actually have anyone to chump block here on the top floor. That feels bad. Especially because it's definitely Legion Wax, Legion Wax. Unless I put a Legion of Wax on the top floor. But then Spine Chief has to be on the bottom floor and then I have to chump block for it. 
and the chump block comes from something that is uh, stealthed next turn, so we just lose the spine chief next turn. No. No, I don't think we do want that. At least that top floor positioning, as well as the uh, enemy being there, means that the Spine Chief has gotten a bunch of stats already. Oh, baby. Until it exceeds capacity. This is endless, so I could just put it down and then kill it, but it goes to the top of the deck and then I wouldn't be able to play it. And I intend on playing it here. We kill those. And then we get two big boys back. Uh, I do want to get rid of Proclamation from the deck. So I will throw that there. Hallowed Halls might be the piece we needed to, to make this all pop off. Okay, Mortal Entrapment definitely needs to be played this turn, which means Hallowed Halls is not being played this turn. Is that true? Yes. Yes, that is. Also, Hallowed Halls can only even get one back at the moment. Molded can get one back right now, although it can't put it down. <laughs> uh, you take the damage. So I guess I don't mold it because I don't want to pull it back out just yet. Sounds good to me. Hallowed Hall would have been really good in the next hand though. Hmm. I wonder if that makes it worthwhile. Although not necessarily because I'm about to mold it, get a Legion of Wax. You go in the middle line and then descend. Well molded, gaining another Legion of Wax. You go in the middle line. I don't need to echo transfer on the top floor. I can do it here with this Legion of Wax. Um, so I'm looking for something that I specifically want to exhaust. Beautiful. The problem is this kills friendly units, right? And if it kills the twins of wax, they'll split into two motes of wax and suddenly my uh, capacity is already overloaded. And then all this is doing is bringing back a single unit, but it will kill the Legion wax. So it would bring back two in that. Well, or it would bring back one of the two in that case. Um, I can do it in the middle line, however. Right, because then we get all the motes of wax, but we also get another legion wax. We'll take the extract damage wherever it's available. I can't have hallowed halls hit with total recall, so we're not playing that this turn because I don't want to consume. Some charged echoes for me. And Exalc is pretty powerful, but the Spine Chief takes so much damage. It's insane. Hmm. Bring him back with even more damage on. Um, let's return a... Brackshaw. Again, just another card I'm trying to get rid of. 
You go out on the front line and I'll remove the Ember Drain so I don't have to deal with that next turn because I am soon to draw into my multi entrapment again. I would very much like to be able to play it. <laughs> wow, apparently the game doesn't want me to play it at all. <laughs> um... Descent? Yeah, Descent. Why don't you get down there? Gonna get. I'll Echo Infuse wherever available. I want to Hallowed Halls, but it does nothing. It'll just kill these two right now. I'm actually totally fine with that. Nice. Oh, that'll do it. That'll do it already. There you go. Get days for a bunch more turns as well. Why not? I don't know how this does against the last divinity. I think there is exactly one way to find out. So, we've finished a, a run with more than 100 pack shards, and as a result, we get taken to this fight. The last divinity, either in victory or defeat, the divinity's endless destruction burns on. Last divinity has uh, different status effects on each floor and gains 7 damage when it gains relentless. Okay. So, last divinity is the size of all of the floors. On the top floor, it has uh, 10 damage sweep. It gets more damage with the more pack shards you've taken, by the way. Uh, mid floor, it is eight damage multi strike, and then the bottom floor, it's twelve damage multi, uh, twelve damage trample. However, on all floors, it has purify. After a debuff deals damage to this unit, remove that debuff. Very powerful effect right there for the uh, boss to have, the old bossaroonie. Unfortunately, I can't use Echo Transfer on the top floor. Well, actually, I could. It would be Fracture, Total Recall, Fracture, Echo Transfer, but I want to play the Legion Wax, obviously, so. Uh, and because we did that to Legion... Let's Echo Transfer the Legion Wax. I think that's a great idea, actually. And do I want a Total Recall to bring both of those back? No, I don't want those ones to consume. Maybe I should just play Total Recall at the start of the hand. I very seldom actually play it. <laughs> this isn't exactly the style of deck for it, to be fair. So one of the big reasons to want Jack Strips is because many of these enemies will spawn in with a whole floor of damage shield, but that just gets removed. By the good old friend... By the good old folks at Jack Strips. Yeehaw! Uh, okay, I can't play Mortal Entrapment this hand, unfortunately. Because I have to play the Legion Wax as well as the Bounty Stalker. Does the Bounty Stalker want to be in the back line yet? Not desperately. Good deaths on that bottom line. We... Uh, I mean, you get an incant trigger. We'll mold on the top floor. Get the one with the better stacks back. Pop you on the bottom line. Do anything to activate a echo transfer here. So this Dark Wings is a upgraded Dark Wings, and its harvest ability is now apply armor 15 to their units. All of their units. It's a rough one. 
It's it's definitely a rough one. It's given plus 45 to that whole floor right there. It's rough. Ari roughness? It. It has it. Yeah, there's not too much I can do about that right now. They spawn bosses as well, by the way. Chains the Sided has just spawned. Good to see you, bud. Now, I have, yeah, two legions of wax in the draw pile, so this hallowed. Or just bring both back there. Ooh. Echoes of the past definitely goes out on this floor. I could send a unit down, but I really actually do want to kind of keep them where they are. Spine Chief takes a bunch of damage this turn. It's deeply unfortunate. Do I want to give four damage to the Shade Wing and to send it? Save a lot of HP on the Spine Chief. Literally 120. Yes. The Pyre wouldn't have died to that because of the whole... Um, the whole catch-fail situation we have in the Vapor Funnel and the Boon of the Blacksmith. Anything that goes to the top with less than 40 HP just dies. It just dies. Yikes. These top floors aren't getting easier. Maybe I have to hallowed, hallowed halls here. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear me. It's, it's a lot better. I still believe we are dead. Uh, see how this one resolves, though. So this was a great plan for gaining a bunch of money, but as I said, not too good for scaling against the endgame threat. Having that much money helped us get a bunch of things, but unfortunately, what we really needed uh, was... Uh, a plan to scale ridiculously. Because you have to scale ridiculously for this fight. Normal fair decks won't win here. It's broken decks that win here. And you have opportunities to try and make them broken using the um, using the backshot system Appa mentioned, using the uh, Divine Temples, using the uh, buffs that you can get from that. Okay. We go to the top floor. See how this resolves. They go to the top floor. One through them. They hit. 82 by 3. And that was the unit, by the way, that I just previously sent down. Damn. Damn is how we answer that one. I was very much hoping that I would have had the ability to kill that unit. Um, or maybe send it down again, just kind of delay it for a little bit so that I can try and get uh, a, a more consistent damage engine online. By the time it came back to the top, it was just going to kill us instantly. Because we didn't have uh, quick damage to put against it, unless it died on the midline, which it wasn't going to die on the midline, it was always going to represent a giant threat to us. Um, yeah, 
that 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 was that was unfortunate it is however worth noting that we were about to have bosses come through that we just did not have the damage to ever kill uh regardless of whether or not we use the a all day magic to send that minion down and that is definitely what ended up killing us on that turn um we were going to die in a few turns time unless we started with different cards basically that's okay though it happens the scaling in this deck is not necessarily as fast as we would have needed it to be um in order to do things like that but god if it wasn't incredibly fun generating that much money for the moment my name has been rhapsody the name of the game has been monster train the name of the dlc specifically the last divinity you'll be able to find a link at the top of the description down below to the Steam store page where you can pick up this game for yourself as well as the DLC. I heartily, heartily recommend it. Uh, again, I have been sponsored by them for some work in the past, but again, I have played hundreds of hours of the game before I ever got sponsored by them. And that's a hell of an investment to make on my part if I was just not keen on it the entire time, right? Uh... There's a playlist in the description down below with all my content on this game past, present, and future, as well as the patch notes video I mentioned previous, if you want to now go and look at that, now having finished the run. Uh, it's also worth noting, sorry, I should have put this at the very start, because most people leave halfway through the outro, uh, but if uh, on the first episode of a new series, it is very, very important uh, for the growth of the channel, if you do like the content, to like uh, like and like and like and like and comment and subscribe and do the YouTube things. Um, I, I don't like asking, uh, and I dislike that YouTube has created a platform that incentivizes asking, but uh, especially on the first episode of a series, it's really, really important, helps grow the community, and it makes me give a, give a make, makes, 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 my, makes my heart smile. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you next time.